Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the Spiritism Talk series promoted by the United States Spiritist Federation every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I am very happy to host this talk by Marcio Silva, who will be uh, leading our live with the theme, Define Selfishness. Before we get to Marcio, I have three announcements. First, there is a new weekly podcast-like series called Psychology and Spirituality, a bridge to a better life based on the works of Joanna De Angelis. There is a new episode every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The Psychology and Spirituality Weekly Talks based on the works of Joanna De Angelis will offer a safe space to confront, compare, correlate, and expand spirituality concepts from a psychological lens, bringing insights, actionable tips, and real-role advice to help you lead a better life. Please subscribe to receive notifications of new episodes at the USSF YouTube channel. Second announcement, the USSF is hosting the 17th U.S. Spiritist Symposium on September 30th of this year in Portland, Oregon. This symposium will focus on the topic of spiritual path to mental balance with a full day program, including talks, panels, Q&A sessions, youth panel, kids and youth activities. Save the date. And finally, on the screen, please note there is a QR code. If you want to help the USSF produce more publications and promote spiritism to everyone, please scan the QR code on screen for your donation. Now, back to Marcio. Hi, Marcio, how you doing? Hi. Good. Fine. So together with everyone who's watching this live broadcast, I'd like to welcome you. And it's so great to have you here to discuss define selfishness, very important topic. Before he starts to enlighten us in the next hour or so, I'd like to introduce him. Marcio Silva has studied Spiritism for more than 10 years, actively working at Peace and Knowledge Spiritist Center of Orlando, Florida, uh, acronym PKSCO, presenting lectures and studies. And also in its fraternal assistance team, Marcio is a Navy officer, veteran, and has two master's degrees one with distinction in telecommunications engineering from Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, and the other one in computer engineering from Universidad de San Paulo at Escola uh, Politecnica. So please take this opportunity to send in your questions during the presentation using the chat window. Marcio has reserved some time to address your comments and questions once he concludes his presentation. Marcio, it's all yours. Thank you, Peter. Thanks so much. So let me, first of all, let me express my gratitude for the invite. Uh, it's always good, not only for me, but for my studies to, to bring the, uh, to bring this idea about spiritism and uh, the concepts of spiritism to anyone that is interested in that. And also, uh, once again, express my gratitude to the mentors that helped me with the with this study, because without them, for sure, I would not reach the, uh, the final of the study. It's too much information here about selfishness in the spiritism and to concentrate all this information into a into a single presentation less than an hour 45 minutes it's something that it's uh, it's it's going to be pretty hard without their support so i'd like to to express this thing to them okay so as peter mentioned the uh, selfishness it's a very very important topic in the in the spiritism and that's the basic of our reflection today Right, because selfishness is 
it's sometimes it's a very sensitive topic because it touched our inner psychological uh, personality. And sometimes we are not comfortable in talking about that. But let's make it a, a very smooth. And the objective is to have everyone onboarding on what is selfishness and how can we treat the selfishness, okay? So uh, a starting point here will be, I like to bring this picture here. So this picture here, I think it summarizes a lot of selfishness and how we treat that. So uh, this picture was published in a newspaper about 10 years ago. And here we can see a very, a very poor woman or girl that we can see that, that she is missing a lot of needs, right? And one old man here is giving his flip-flops to her. So by the way, uh, this uh, old man here, he refused a lot. He complained about the newspaper, but because he didn't like to publish this picture in a newspaper because what he did came from his inside, was not something to be shown in the media. But let's use that thing as an example. Look at that. Uh, this old man here is giving the flip-flops. His only flip-flop is not a spare one. He's giving what he, what he has to her. And another thing that we can see here in this picture, this picture, by the way, is in a sidewalk in a beach in Rio de Janeiro. So you can see it's close to the beach. Uh, here it's very hot. And the guy was giving the flip-flops to her. And look at look at the shadow here. The shadow here is pretty close to, to noon, right? Which is pretty, pretty hot. Look at the sensitivity of this old man here on giving that thing to her. He felt the pain. He felt her pain. And then look at that. She deserves that thing and give it to her. And not only giving to her, she didn't feel that uh, that she could be invisible, right? She perceived the situation and he did what he can do to save her a little bit of her pain. So that's exactly one antidote, one medicine against selfishness. So if we put on the on the other toes, so we can feel the pain and then we can do what is what is in our in our hand to help them. So I like this picture. I think it summarizes a lot about how we can how we can treat the selfishness and how we can fight the selfishness. Okay. Okay. So uh, the references for for today: the Spirit's Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. So the Spirit's Book is the basic basic book from the, the spirit, spirit in codification. So Kardec brought this book and uh, it, it's presenting 65 times. Kardec is mentioning the word selfishness in this book, right? In the gospel according to spiritism, Kardec is presenting, is mentioning 55 times the word selfishness. And in the posthumous work, which is a, it's not a book written by Kardec, it's a book that was compiled after his death by the, by the team, by the members of the, the Spiritum Society of Paris. They took some articles from Kardec and they published and compiled into this book. Also in this book, in the posthumous works, it's being presented 45 times. So now we can see here what is the importance of this topic for the spiritism. And to fight selfishness is a key for us to ascend in the, in the scale of words, right? There's so much talk about, the, about the, the earth going up to the next phase to the, as a regenerated world. But without our effort against selfishness, this is going to be pretty tough to, to move up. And the fourth one, the last but not the least reference here, is a, is a book written not only by Joana de Angelis by the hands of Givaldo Franco, but also it's written 
by psychologists that also uh, study the spiritism. So they make the link between the psychology and the spiritism the, that was brought by Joana de Angelis, of course. So those four books, these four books right here are the, the reference for the today's reflection. If anyone of the attendants would like to go deeper in this topic, I would suggest to go deeper in each one of these books, and I will present the specific references uh, during the, the presentation. Okay, so let's move on with an introduction to this topic. And I would like to bring the question uh, 913 from the Spirit's book, where Kardec asked it to the spirits, among the vices, the issues that, that we have, which one can be uh, considered radical? Radical means root, right? The origin. So let's see the answer from the, from the spirits. We have said it many times. Look at that. The spirits brought to us that they are talking about selfishness for so many times, emphasizing the importance of this topic to be treated. Selfishness is the origin of all evil. Pretty strong, right? All evil. It's not something of some evil. It's all evil. It's the root cause. So if we go deep down, in every vice that we that we are facing, we are going to identify that the root cause is selfishness. No matter how much you fight them, you will not succeed in extirpating them until you attack the root of evil, until you have destroyed its cause. Pretty strong words right here, right? Destroy, destroy the selfishness. That is being very emphatic by the message that the spirits brought to us. And Kardec compiled here in the question 913. Therefore, make every effort to that effect, because that is the where the real wound of society lies. So once again, emphasizing that selfishness is a wound, right, for the society. And if we want to move up, in the, the scale of words, we need to get rid of that, destroy. So very important observation by the spirits. So in the gospel according to spirit, in the chapter 11, item 11, there is also a description about the, the selfishness, a reflection. And let's see what is being presented there. Selfishness. The scourge of hum humanity, once again, pretty strong. Must. It's not something that we've got a choice or something. No, must. Must disappear from Earth, whose moral progress impedes. So selfishness is the blocking point for us to move up in the scale of words. Of words. So expel selfishness from the Earth so that it can climb the scale of the world. So exactly what I said before, we need to remove selfishness from our psychosphere, from our psychological sphere of the earth. Because it's time for humanity to put on its uh, virile garment for which you must first expel it from your hearts. So remove selfishness. And if you see the who signed it off, this message was Emmanuel. Emmanuel uh, was a mentor. Uh, so it was a Chico Xavier's mentor when Chico was incarnated here uh, on Earth. So that's the only message signed off by Emmanuel in the in the entire codification made by Kardec. So you see both uh, both information brought in the Spirit's book. And in the gospel according to spirit, they're pretty strong against selfishness. Very emphatic and very hard to us, telling us move uh, selfishness away from your heart. Get rid of that, right? So now let's understand exactly what is selfishness. 
what exactly is selfishness? How can we define in a single word or in a single sentence? Uh, the synonym of selfishness is egoism. Egoism means the same thing as selfishness. If we break down the word egoism, we can see ego. It's a, it's a Latin prefix. It's a Latin word. And is ego means myself, individual being, me, okay? And is, which is a, a Greek suffix, means intoxicated by a substance. So if we combine ego and is, we identify that we are intoxicated by ourselves. So think about tabages, alcoholism, right? If you are intoxicated by alcohol, it's alcoholism. If you're intoxicated by tobacco, it's going to be tabages. So if we're intoxicated by ourselves, so that's going to be the egoism, right? So that's the logic behind the egoism. So let's contextualize the ego. So to understand the ego uh, a bit better, we need to understand this axis here, ego and self, right? Uh, this is a two comp components of our psychological side. Each one of us, we have our ego, we have our self, right? Self is the major mean, is where it's our library, right? Internal library. Every experience that we have is accumulated inside the self, right? It's our entirety experience. And the inner voice that brings us a path aligned with God's law, right? So the, when we say that the God's laws are in our conscience, it's exactly in our self, right? This part here. And self is a very divine portion of our, of our mind. And the ego on the other side is like, it's like a mask, it's an envelope that we receive uh, in every incarnation. It's how you are presenting to external world. And the ego is responsible to manage our experience from the self, right? It's like a manager. So ego and self should be pretty well balanced. When we've got an unbalanced situation, which means that the ego uh, considering itself bigger than the self, then we've got the egoism. So ego, it's a very important part, but it should not be bigger than the self. It should manage the self. Because imagine, imagine if we've got, I don't know how many uh, past incarnations uh, we had. So let's say 2,000, 3,000. How can we manage all that information, all this library? So the ego is the one that is performing this management. And that's the important thing. So, but on the other side, if we have a fragile ego, we are gonna, we are gonna face uh, delusions, fantasies, guilty, victimization, hallucination. So that's what happened and is a consequence of the egoism. Okay, so it's very important to understand this, this axis here, this link between ego and self, right? This is brought by, by, by Carl Jung and Joana de Angelis in the psych psychological uh, terms. But I'm trying here to explain in a simple way because this is key for us when we, we are thinking about uh, extirpate the ego, the egoism or, or fight the the, the egoism or the selfishness, we need to understand this point, right? Okay, so moving forward, the origin of selfishness. So selfishness, there is an origin for that. And it's a, it's a re remaining uh, stuff from our animality. And it's a, it has a cousin, call it pride. So egoism is everything is for me. Pride 
I am the best, right? It's a, it's a cousin of the, the selfishness. So it's a remaining thing from the, the our animal part. So in our evolution as a spirit, when we were animal, we need to be selfish because if not, we are not going to survive. So it's the instinct for conservation, right? All instincts have their own reason and their usefulness because God didn't make anything useless. What happened is that the man using, abusing of his free will, give more uh, power to the selfishness. So instead of getting rid of that, give more power for the selfishness as a consequence of what we we had from the animality, right? So man was not created selfish or proud by God because God created us simple and without any knowledge. But we, we became selfish and proud when we exaggerate the instinct of, for conservation, right? That was given by God for, to, for us to preserve, for us to continue alive. So if you see uh, if you see an animal, if you get the uh, National Geographic documentary, and you see a lion when he captured a lion, uh, when he captured the the zebra, for example, he get the zebra and run away from others, right? That's a, a selfishness, but he needs that thing because if not, he's not going to survive. So, but when we move to a a thinking, so with rational with some kind of intelligence, we need to know that actually we don't need that thing anymore. We can survive in society, sharing and uh, helping others instead of fighting against others for conservation or for preservation. So that's, uh, that's how spiritives explain the selfishness, okay? And uh, let's see the consequences of selfishness. So first of all, attitudes that reveal little solidarity, seeking to live exclusively for themselves. So we perceive when we feel that someone is a little uh, is selfish, that everything is ex exclusive for themselves. It seems that the world, the sun, is uh, walking around them. So everything is that the world is running around them. The world is moving around them. So there's no solidarity. Everything is for them. That's an expression of the, the selfishness. Exaggerated attachment. So everything is mine. My car, my home, my family, my son, and so on. Everything is being mine, 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 mine. So it's exaggerated. Exaggerated means that you got more than you need. And you tie to, to this excess of things that you actually you don't need to continue in your life. An important thing here. So uh, selfishness also hides our inner conflicts. So because, remember the, the axis of ego and self, because the ego is so exaggerated, it hides the bad things that could come from the self and create a false idea of ourselves, which means that we think that we are better than the others, which is a proudness, right? Escape from reality and illusion. So because the ego thinks that he is the center of the universe, what happened? You create a false illusion. We are, we are not the center of the universe. So we live in a society and we need to interact with others. And the others are exactly as we are. So they are on the same level. We are not better than them. Another topic here, it's an exaggeration of moral into actions. So, which means that we disguise as ideals, good intentions, devotion. 
right? That's a, a very sensitive situation because sometimes we are we are trying to deceive, right, ourselves and trying to deceive others. It's like you are you are uh, you are in a character of a movie, so you are presenting to others a different personality than you actually are, right? So you exaggerate that thing. You exaggerate that you're very moral and actually you are you are not so moral as you are presenting. So in this one, when once we understand this axis between ego and self, it prevents divine manifestations of the self. Right? And actually it uh, it promotes vices such as hatred, envy, jealousy, greed, ambition, and etc. So those are all children of the of the selfishness. So if we do not make a good management of the self, it will promote this uh, these vices. So that's the consequence, one of the consequences of the selfishness. And what about our internal fights against selfishness? So we've got internal fights. So you know. We, we can be better. Yes, we can be better, but we've got this internal situation. The process, once again, the process of understanding this axis between the ego and self will meet with internal resistance. Why? Because we're still thinking that we are more important than others. We still think that we need more than others, right? So these obstacles are, are built by the ego. Right, as a result of our selfishness and the cousin pride. Uh, the causes of our internal conflicts go, goes very close to moral issues, not yet worked out and not yet resolved. That's exactly pointing to the self knowledge. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to accept a moral situation that we have right and try to fix it so when you've got the selfishness so usually this situation is being hidden and it's not going to be resolved it's going to push it back because we do not accept the way that we that we are so it's a very sensitive situation and self-knowledge is the key for us to to better understand the thing The shock that man experiences from the other's selfishness is what often makes him egoistic. So it's so easy for us to, to outsource the blame, outsource the facts that we actually have, right? So and if someone is being very selfishness against us, so mentally to protect ourselves, we become selfish selfish as well right because we feel that the need to put ourselves on the, def the defensive so that's presented in the question 917 of the spirits book so protecting ourselves remember the the instinct of preservation of conservation we try to protect ourselves we become selfish as well so that's the fight internal fight that we have and excessive protection and frustration compromise the ego if you compromise the ego right you make the the axis of self and ego unbalanced and that will not allow you to get rid of the selfishness okay and in summary Joana de Angelis brought to us the ego's biggest challenge is to maintain a positive image with self-esteem and at the same time not being individualist proud and selfish so our internal fight is exactly this thing summarizes Joana is she is fantastic she always uh, goes straight to the point so that's our internal fight, is to keep a positive image with self-esteem, which is very important. We need to love us. And at the same time, 
not being selfish, not being proud, not being just you and forget about others. So it's an internal fight that we need to struggle and uh, with that we need to fight, okay? Okay, but thank God, God is good. We know that. And we've got antidotes to selfishness. And it's uh, very well explained in the chapter 11, items one and four of the gospel against the spiritism. So it's so simple in terms of a statement, but it's so difficult to implement. Which is this antidote? It's the second commandment, the golden rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. So pretty short sentence, pretty concise. So we all know about that thing, but to put in practice, sometimes it's quite hard. Because of what? Because of, because of our selfishness. So love your neighbor as yourself is the fullest expression of charity. It's exactly do for others what you want others to do for you. Pretty simple. If you don't want something to be done against you, don't do it against others. If you don't like someone to be screaming at you, don't scream against others, right? It's so simple, but we need to put in practice as a daily exercise. Important topic here, when you see the, the, the golden rule, is this part right here, as yourself. Love your neighbor, but as yourself. So this commandment is not saying that love your neighbor more than yourself or less than yourself. It's as yourself. So when I was doing this study in a group about the, the golden rule, so a good question was brought. So if someone is doing charity, a lot of charity, pretty good charity, but he is pushing him or her aside, leaving him or her at the second plane including the, the health and something like that. So this is not exactly what it's saying, the golden rule. The golden rule is saying, love your neighbor, of course, but as yourself. So if you put yourself aside, forget about your health and don't care about you. So actually you are not playing the golden rule, right? You should love yourself as well, the same way that you're gonna love neighbor, your neighbor. So that's a very important topic. And the way that we are going to deal with that, it's a self-knowledge, right? Self-forgiveness. Sometimes you are doing a lot of charity, right? And for, uh, forgetting about yourself. It's because you are blaming yourself. You've got a guilt inside you and you cannot self-forgive, right? So that's an expression that should be treated, right? You need to love yourself as well because if not how can you move on okay so let's go deeper in this uh, antidotes and see how we can put them in practice right because it does not make sense the knowledge without actions so the antidotes first one charity as we discuss charity if we put in practice, as indicated in the, in the spirit teams, is the practice of benevolence with everyone, the indulgence against others' imperfections, and forgiveness. Forgive others and forgive yourself, right? Benevolence, it's being good, good to others. Indulgence is to accept others' imperfections. We are all imperfect right so we need to accept others imperfections and forgiveness understanding that the other is also a spirit in evolution imperfect one like us so if we are imperfect we're going to make mistakes right if you're going to make mistakes we need to understand that so forgive the others understanding that situation and forgive us as well Understanding that we are a spirit in evolution, that we sometimes we fail. But we need to learn the lesson from what we fail. 
if we don't learn the lesson, so it, it means that we are not practicing this, okay? And the question 917, the question 917 was mentioned before. So selfishness is the source of all vices, as charity is of all virtues. To destroy one and develop the other must be the aim of all men efforts. So we've got selfishness, we've got charity. As we move up the charity, the selfishness will be fading away. Right? So that's what Paul mentioned, that the, without charity, there is no salvation. So which means that that's the situation, that's the logic, that's the rational faith, that the, the, the beauty of the spirit, the spirit is bringing to us. If we improve the charity, we are going to move down the selfishness. And this transition is very important, not only for us, but for the earth to move on to a regenerated world. So that's a great, great, uh, a great topic that was brought by the spirits to us. Move up the charity because it automatically will move down the selfishness and until selfishness is fading away, okay? Okay. Talking about the next antidote, it's uh, self-knowledge. What exactly is a self-knowledge? Self-knowledge could be a congress, could be a five-day congress, easy to discuss and present and talk. So let's put, let's put self-knowledge into practice. Self-knowledge is basically understanding this axis between ego and the self our divine portion, our library in the self, and the ego managing this. It's an intimate renovation with full balance. We're not going to become a set in one reincarnation. We need to understand that. We are going to improve, but we're going to improve with balance, not in an aggressive way against us or against others. And the question 919. So you see, Kardec presented in the 917, the, the 917, the selfishness, right? Selfishness discussions and so. And the 919, Kardec brought a good question to the spirits. What is the most effective practical way to improve in this life and resist the drag of evil? So once again, the spirits, remember us a long time ago, a sage has told you, know thyself. Kardec was not so satisfied with this answer because we know, know uh, self-knowledge is an important thing, but how can we do that? How can we actually do that thing? So, St. Augustine, in the question 919a, suggested a way that we can perform our self-knowledge on a daily basis. It's not on weekly basis, monthly, yearly, in the New Year's Eve. So every day before going to bed, think about what, what you did during the day. What you did during the day, what you did against others. If the other performed the same against you, how do you feel? Comfortable, uncomfortable. So if we practice that thing on a daily basis, we can put self-knowledge into practice and understand what is our problem, what is our suffering, why I'm being selfish, right? Because at the end, as we said in the beginning of this reflection, uh, selfishness is the root cause. So if we squeeze, 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 we are going to reach selfishness. So it's a key thing here. And St. Augustine promote this exercise to be performed on a daily basis. Every day we are going to the bed. We can say a prayer. And we can also make just a short review of what we did during the day against us and against others. So those acts were good.
good or bad? So let's reflect. Let's make an adult review, an adult analysis on that thing. And then we can identify where I'm playing bad, where I'm playing good, my virtue. So if I'm being dragged by some evil, by some vice, and then we can know us a little bit better. So once we know us a little bit better, we can make selfishness understandable, and then we can start to fight against selfishness. Okay? Very logic. Uh, it's very, uh, very uh, pragmatic the way that Kardec presented this topic to us. I like so much. It helps me a lot. It helps a lot of people in the fraternal assistance as well when we talk that way, using this logic of understanding ourselves and try to squeeze and reach in what part are you being selfish. That will help a lot and make it comfort against our sufferings, right? It's exactly the, the way that we could play the, the good suffering, okay? Okay, so uh, let's bring here a final message here from the Spirit's book. Question 913 from Kardec. Whoever wants from this life to approach moral perfection must, must, something almost mandatory, must purge his heart of all selfishness. Since selfishness is incompatible with justice, love, and charity. Important message here at the end. Selfishness neutralizes all other qualities, which mean virtues. So, and if you if you make just a short observation around us, if you identify someone uh, selfish, selfish, all the virtues that the, the other person should have is going to be shadow by the by the selfishness. Selfishness will create will give more importance than the other. So which means neutralize all other qualities. So I hope this uh, this reflection here could help uh, to motivate anyone to go deeper in this study and study not only with others but with yourself trying to feel what where are you being selfish and how can you improve that thing okay so i appreciate your attention and we open for questions now peace for all thank you thank you marcio for the reflections you provided so let's see what we have for questions and answers we're now open for that the first one is from the united states spiritist federation marcio what do you think is the worst kind of selfishness? Worst kind of selfishness. So selfishness, selfishness itself. So if we consider that thing as a whole, it's the worst part, right? If we think about us being everything for us, so we're going to have more than we need. So if we go to the questions uh, 920, 921 of the Spirit's book, where Kardec is talking about uh, happiness and uh, relative happiness, one of the topics, one of the questions is saying about what we need to reach a relative happiness in this life. Is that having exactly what you need, not having more than you need. When you have more than we need, it means that we are being selfish. We are capturing resources to us. So that would be uh, a point that the worst kind of selfishness would be having more than, than we need. So being very attached, right, to what we don't need, but we would like to have. So when we, when we break this thing, so let me have just what I need, right? And let me try to help others to reach what they need to have that they don't have right now okay that would be the, the worst kind of selfishness is that when we have more than we need right 
Hey, thank you for that answer. Very good points. This is from the U.S. Spiritist Federation. Is there ever a time when selfishness is healthy? Yes, a time when we were an animal, right? It's for the instinct of conservation. We should be a little bit selfish because if not, we are not going to survive. But we're not animals anymore. Animals, of course, animals as an animal that react per instinction. So we need to react using the rational, the thinking, right? And uh, in that situation, it was useful for us to survive. Right now, selfish is not useful anymore, right? That's what we need to get rid of that to improve uh, in the scale of worlds, okay? Very good point. So once we develop a little discernment, then we can start to become less selfish. Yes. Okay. That's right. Okay. Next question. This is from the International Spiritist Council. If the law of progress says that selfishness is one of the biggest obstacles to our spiritual progress, what steps can we take to become less selfish? So that is exactly what was presented in the in the today's reflection is applying the golden rule, the second commandment: love yourself, uh, love the, love your neighbor as yourself, right? So put that thing into practice, which means the charity, along with self knowledge. So if we put charity in practice, along with a self knowledge, we are gonna become naturally less selfish. Okay? Okay, very good point. Next question. Also from the International Spiritist Council. If charity is the antithesis of selfishness, how can we practice charity according to Spiritism? Sure. Uh, as mentioned in one of the slides today as well, so the, the charity from the Spiritist uh, point of view is, is a triangle. It's benevolence with everyone, no exceptions, right? With all other ones. It's being uh, indulgence against others, imperfection, and also practicing the forgiveness. It's very common for us to see charity as a material charity where we donate, donate money, donate food. Actually, the donation, the material one, is just one leg, which is related to benevolence, right? Benevolence with everyone. So you're going to give money, you're going to donate uh, food. So, but a charity is much more than that. Is as I said, you need to be you need to accept others' imperfections, right? You need to understand others' imperfections. That's being indulgent. And practice of forgiveness, right? Forgiveness with others, to others, and forgiveness, self-forgiveness. So that's the way that we can put charity into practice according to Spiritism. Okay? Okay, thank you. Let's see what we have next. This one's from Yasko Arakava. Hi, Yasko. Doesn't lack of selfishness lead to low self-esteem? So what's the relationship yeah. between the two? Yeah, so there was a message from, that's a challenge. It's our internal fight. That's what uh, Joana de Angelis brought to us. And it was presented in a previous slide. So a self-esteem is that you love yourself. That's the meaning of self-esteem. So lack of selfishness doesn't mean that you need to... Selfishness doesn't mean that you are not loving yourself. You need to love yourself, right? What means love yourself? Love yourself means God gave to us the body. God gives to us the soul, right? So treat them according to what God gave to you, right? That's a self-esteem. Consider yourself loving you, right? And the selfishness 
it's a completely different side. Everything is for you, which is some kind of opposite. But that's an internal fight that we have. So that's a balance that we should that we should find that uh, being positive, keeping your self-esteem without being individualist, without being selfish, without being so pride. So that's a balance that we need to, to find ourselves. And the key for that thing is the self-knowledge. When you perform the self-knowledge, I understand that's, that's my self-esteem, right? My self-esteem will, will, uh, will avoid me to do some stuffs. Because this thing, it's, uh, it's against, against the best practice. Okay? Okay. Is it a little bit like uh, we should learn to respect the gifts that we have that have been given from God? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see what the next question is. This one's from the U.S. Spiritist Federation. People in the United States tend to praise rugged individualism mm -hmm. but is this an excuse to justify selfishness yes i would agree with that thing right okay. because uh, here in us uh, we can see a lot of materialist excess right so we have more than we actually need so and to give a justification internal justification that i'm doing that thing that will justify the selfishness. So I would absolutely agree with that thing. And in the United States here, not only in the United States, other other countries as well, we can see that thing. So it's me, it's all for me, me first. Okay, me first, but but you need to think about not uh let's say uh, uh how can I say when you fight against others? So uh, stepping on others, right? Me first, not me first. So me first, but using what I need to survive, what I need, using not more than what I need, right? But in the society that enforces the cons consuming, buying, and having that thing, that's a justification that we can that we can use, right? I'm the individual, I need that thing because my neighbor has this thing. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has a, a new car. Do you need, do you actually need a new car? Think about that thing, it doesn't matter. You're not a competitor with your neighbor on that thing. No, I absolutely agree with that thing. Sometimes rugged individualism can be about self-reliance, which can be a positive thing, but... Mm -hmm very easy to kind of cross that up and get Move. it with yeah. selfishness. It's a very, very thin line and a very fuzzy line to cross that border. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. We have time for one more question from the United States Spiritist Federation. When we struggle to let go of selfishness, what are we afraid of? Mm, that's a good question. So, when we struggle to let go of selfishness, what are we afraid of? We are afraid of, of not having what we need. Right? So, it's a, it's a remaining of our selfishness, right? So, I'm concerned about if I miss it, I think, is this thing actually important for me in the, in the near future or in the next month. So that's something that uh, we can be afraid of. Let me see the example of the guy who gave the flip flop in the very beginning. I've got just one flip flop and I gave it. So it's very hot. So I can be afraid of what? I don't have money to buy a new one for me. I need a flip flop because the, the floor is so hot, right? I can be afraid, so I'm not gonna give I'm not going to give to her because maybe I would need this flip-flop later. Or I need this flip-flop now. And I don't have money to buy it right now. Or maybe the flip-flop is sold out. So this, uh, this excess of future that we can put in our mind uh, could be 
uh, something that you're going to be afraid of. But God, help us when you're doing something good, something well. We need to keep faith in God and say, if I'm so for sure, I'm doing something good. So I, I, will, I will be supported if I need it later. If I get something here that I would need later, if I would need, right? I think that's the that's what we are going to be afraid of. And sometimes it's blocking us for doing some kind of charity, right? Okay, very good answer. Thank you, Marcio. And thank you, everyone who you. watched this live talk. And those who have been following our weekly Spiritism Talk series. Next Saturday, we will have Livia Urihara, and her presentation will be announced in the near future. I would like to close by us uh, doing a final prayer. So if you can, can you please close your eyes? Dear God, our dear beloved mentors, please bless this country and all countries. Please bless our planet. Please bless humanity and our efforts to progress. May all of us in our daily lives do our best to overcome selfishness, to be able to embrace fraternity and to understand the ways in which we can contribute toward the betterment of humanity by recognizing that all of us are brothers and sisters and all of us need unity with a single purpose of being in harmony with the good. Please bless the opportunities that we all have and may we each and every day find ways to express gratitude. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you.